Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is The Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Pro Cycling Manager 2019. It's career mode episode number 5. We're heading into stage 3 at the Tour of Oman. Fairly flat for this stage. We'll jump in. Uh, probably before this little climb, because I would imagine that's going to do some damage to the field, and then we'll set up and finish things off. 105 kilometers still left in this stage, but we ride on board with Logan Owen, who is currently in the lead for the mountain climbers. With that, he is hitting a climb here, four and a half kilometers to go. Let's go ahead and ride on board with Logan as we try to contest this climb. Now the group that I'm with all contested, or most of them anyway, contested the last sprint point. So maybe they're here for that and not necessarily for the climbing point. But we're going to try to get it if we can. Right now this group breakaway six riders and they're a minute and a half ahead so it's pretty close as it is right now to the pack three kilometers to go to the top here five riders we dropped one four riders we dropped another let me look at who's left now Gafferini not a climber. Owen's not a climber, he's a hill guy, but that's good for the attack. Barta is similar to us. So Barta is the one we really need to watch out for as he could sprint up this climb. Two K to go to the top. Race official getting out of the way. 1.7 to the top. We're already past the steepest section. It's going to get better as we go up. Okay, I think. Is that part there? It looks like he might be starting to ride forward. Let's go ahead and go 89. And then we're going to attack here in just a second. Only drops one rider. Now they're attacking. And he doesn't have the energy left to do so. Can he get over the top of one? No, he's going to be third over the top, unfortunately. Uh, but that still gives him two points, and that extends his lead. He had eight, now he has six. Uh, Jan Barta now has six points, though, with that climb. So from zero to six. So not... A great job by Owen on that one. Uh, my early attack was countered pretty well by those two. Now in terms of gap, we're only looking at a minute 44 to the field, so unless unless the peloton suddenly decides... Ooh, hello, there are splits. There are splits. Ermino and Brian. Really? At 89, you couldn't keep up, huh? They'll come back on board, though. At, at this point, minute and a half is a very minimalist chance of winning the stage from the break. But if for some reason three riders do stay away win or lose on the final sprint you're at least getting a top three so at this point we've got to at least give it a shot the man the rider in no man's land has already been reeled in so we're at a minute 25 if the peloton backs off which it is all back together again for the most part anyway still 17 riders off the back but group is looking good here as we head into town let's get back up with uh, logan owen a little further into town here Now 
he should recover fairly easily over the next little while, but again, it depends on whether the field continues to come at us, because the lead is down to just over a minute, or whether they ease up. If they come at us, it's fine. We'll just leave Owen to recover in the field and be ready to be a participant in the end. I mean, at least picked up a couple points in the mountains competition. So I suppose that'll that'll have to do. But let's go ahead and speed it up for a little while. It is down to 50 seconds, so it, it does appear that they are uh, choosing to reel us back in. And, oh, hello, we got an attack. Jan Barta. Coming back at him. back together and uh, that is entirely down to the fact that the field is just 45 seconds behind us. I'm gonna go ahead and save my energy. Sit on. We're cooked. 25 seconds. Alright, field all back together. 96 riders in the peloton. There is a chase group. That chase group just made contact with the back, so they've come back in as well. And we have just over 60 kilometers left to go. Somebody's going to need to go get water. And Ermino is the guy for that. Let's do that now. And then we're going to speed things up as it should be relatively quiet for a while. Now, there is a sprint point to contest here, and there are seconds available at that sprint point. Uh, but I'm not worried about the overall. We need a stage win. And we don't have the top sprinters, so it's going to be difficult to get those three seconds anyway. Uh, you can see there's a lot of riders moving forward at the moment that are looking to contest it. But should I should I take somebody like Cantor and try to go for it? It's a waste of energy. There's time to recover it, though. I mean, we're still 50 kilometers away, and it's going to be downhill after this. We, we might as well participate. So, uh, maybe just Banaszek. Banaszek. Okay, so you're going to relax for a little bit. You're going to relax. Canter, you're going to follow Banaszek. And let's see, 4.8 kilometers. We're already in a pretty good position here. I think when we get down to about 3.3, 3. well, we'll just get to 3 even. And then we're going to start to get an acceleration from Banaszek to move forward. There you go. Now we're going to step it up a little bit. Okay, we're down to 1.6. 1. 1. Let's go 99. And then we're going to sprint Banaszek. Okay, now we're going to sprint Cantor. Ooh, I think I got him over the top first. Got 30 points. These guys can go right back into relaxing. Get them back into the field. There we go, back with the peloton. And we'll go right back into protecting those two riders. And let's go check. Did we actually a rider just launched an attack? Get that one. Ah, oh, Cantor was second. But he was that's still good. Picks up uh, two seconds, time bonus. Picks up four points. Points don't matter, but so we are definitely not winning that competition. Two seconds make a difference in the standings. We have a new break for me as <laughs> our old breakaway companions have decided to have another go. They had not finished off their day's goal and they decided 
They wanted route number two. That means they'll already be greatly weakened, and it'll be pretty easy to catch them. And there's nothing left to contest besides the stage. And guaranteed, those two riders are not going to get far enough away to make anything happen with 37 kilometers left in this one. So let's go ahead and take from the motorbike for a little bit, and we'll move forward. Okay, that little bit of a climb, not steep at all, not steep at all. We've already brought one of those riders back in. There is the other one. Told you they weren't going anywhere. Now Norvea is actually getting a little bit tired there. I don't want that. So uh -oh, the, the field is attacking here. Burkhart, whoever this is, can't quite get him into view. Now the guys up front are but that's already the climb part complete. Definitely some damage done within the group, but we're going to recover somewhat on this descent. It is definitely uphill to the finish, though, as you can see. It is not flat, so this is not going to be your typical attack. Now, we should have recovered on this descent, and there is some. I mean, heart rates are below 140, so everybody's recovering a little bit. But because of the hard attack on this descent, these riders, it's Hershey, Mark Hershey right now, really pushing the tempo for Sunweb. 13 kilometers. Let's go ahead and get serious now and get ready to roll. 12k. Time to form our sprint chain. Now, Narvaez is the protected rider. So we're going to put him on the back of Cantor just to catch that free toe. Now, Brian is the better sprinter. I saved him last time using Batajek's energy a little bit more. McNulty's the one I'd rather see still good to go at the end. And Logan Owen ahead of that. Armino is the guy we don't mind losing as he's the domestique. He's a little bit further back though. You need to start coming forward. And now Mr. Armino. Because suddenly my team drops back to catch his wheel. <laughs> Just gotta hang on. 10k banner right there. Uh, Ermino wasting a bit of energy over the top of this, and kind of so is everybody else as they try to get into position. Narvaez now there, so Ermino can step it up a bit. We're already down to 8.7. Alright, from here it's all uphill to the finish. And actually a little bit steep at the moment, so Ermino's not going to last long on this. Oh, and ready. 6.7k. And Logan Owen's going to take over. Five point five. The riders are entering the last five kilometers of the stage. Nolte. Should have used your gel already. Use Banajex now because I'm pushing McNulty hard, and you can see the guys are still coming up beside him anyway. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, yeah, Banajek. Banajek is 2.4k. I'm kind of thinking we should sprint here. Nolte's going to hang on. Owen's going to just kind of keep pushing so he doesn't get dropped by the group. There's 59 riders left in the peloton, so there are definitely some riders being dropped. Remember, it is uphill. You can see it is an uphill slope to the finish. And that final slope is coming here in just a second. This is kind of the low point right here. And then uphill. So if I try to sprint Banishek from here, it might actually be too much too soon. And they're up. It's going to be now he can sprint. Okay, he's got to get us out front. I'm going to set him back to just effort, and Brian's going to sprint from here. Still bringing Cantor along. Ooh, out of energy. Dang, Brian ran out of energy really quick. This is steeper than it looks, I guess. 
Or we're just that bad at hills? Yeah, Brian's really bad at hills. Cantor's gonna have to go over the top, but not on a sprint. Can he get into a top three? Sprint, sprint, sprint. Hang on, Cantor. Hang on, Cantor. Okay, we got a top three, finally. Peter Sagan, of course, takes the win. Betty all second. But Cantor does get into third. That's a big mark for us, okay? Sponsor objective. Stage win. They don't care if I win the race overall. And that's really sad how that works because that's a higher higher evaluation than a stage win. They only care about individual stage results. That's it. So winning climber's jersey, nothing. Points jersey, nothing. Under 25's jersey, nothing. Overall leader's jersey, literally nothing in that evaluation. Now it can mean something in a separate evaluation overall for the season, but for that specific objective of stage win, they're literally talking about nothing but did you win a stage or not. Now the evaluation is bad if you don't win a stage. But for each step below, you could salvage some of the punishment for not winning that stage. And the sad thing, if, if the objective is top 10 and you manage top 5 overall standings, you're actually getting a bonus. There is no bonus with stage win. If you win three stages, you win five stages in the race. You're not getting a bonus. It is exactly the same evaluation-wise as if you won one stage. And whenever they give you the stage win one, there's no tiers. Like, we're a continental team. Why isn't it a how about stage top five? Because then you actually have a chance to get into a bonus level. You won a stage. You get a bonus. They like that even more than what they initially set out. Or stage top three. Right? Something along those lines. I, I wish they would do that. But anyway, back to the point. Each tier below that salvages some of the punishment, meaning you're not punished quite as bad. So getting a stage top 10, not good. Seen as an ultimate failure. Stage five, as in you got a top five, fourth or fifth place, still not good. And still a bad evaluation, as in total failure. Stage top three is only a partial failure. We had had a fourth place, now we've had a third. So that's better. It's not good. It's still failure, but it's failure failure on a smaller scale now. And again, I, I wish it would be more along the lines of stage top three or stage top five. That would be more realistic. Even just occasionally. I mean, it's fine to still have the occasional we want a stage win for this race. Okay, fine. But every time that the stage one pops up, and it used to be uh, just a couple editions ago, as recent as 2017, I believe, that you actually negotiated the sponsor objectives. They tell you which races matter to them, but you're negotiating what you're going to do with that objective. Whether you're going to push for the top 10, top 25, or if you want to get even higher, better. Or if you're going to push for the mountain jersey, or if you're going to push... And then, every adjustment that you made changed the sponsor income. The tougher the objective, the better the income. I liked that system. Oh my goodness. I, I missed that. I mean, I, I like what we have now with the evaluation on the air. But why can't you do a little bit of both? Why can't you tweak it each year based on those objectives? Right? Implement both parts, both components, and bring them together. 
All right, well, Max Cantor does manage to get into the top three. So Cantor actually got two seconds for the sprint bonus, and he's going to get four seconds for the stage bonus. So Cantor picks up six seconds overall. That's going to move him from 20 seconds, where the bulk of the field is, to now within 14. Bumps him up to fourth place overall with Peter Sagan taking his second stage win. That's 20 seconds in all that he's pulled. Betty All, not far behind him. He's been second twice. But that's a nice little bonus for us. And we're down to, we're at 40 riders. 40 riders that are still on essentially the same time other than the bonuses. Cantor does move up in that competition for the sprints up to third. I, I still don't think he's in contention for that. He's not going to beat Peter Sagan any point. So Sagan's going to have that jersey wrapped up. Just as he's a, a shoe in for that jersey in the Tour de France as long as Mark Cavendish doesn't uh, squeeze him into the wall and, and then... Well, squeeze himself into the wall and then, then make it look like something nasty happened when it didn't. And then the nasty accident does happen, but it wasn't Sagan's fault. Uh, that was the worst disqualification in the history of the sport. Well, okay, no, I can't say the history of the sport because I haven't seen every race in the history. I haven't seen every disqualification. But that's, that's certainly the worst disqualification of the last de decade, for sure. Okay, so Logan Owen... As those couple points, anyway, in the mountain climbers competition. Cantor leads the under 25s now over Philipson. So we're having a good little race here. We're going to move on to stage four. Now, stage four, Cantor's time is no longer going to matter. My overall contention isn't going to matter very much either. Narvaez is going to be our best competitor for this one. But this is definitely not our strength for this race. So we're not going to get a stage win today. And there are no mountain points along the way, so I'm not going to have anyone in the break. So we're just going to try to get to the end and survive. And we'll pick it up near the end. This is a pretty short stage, 138 kilometers. And this is at 128, so you can see that it's going to be about a 7 to 8 kilometer climb. Oh. oh, hello, hello, new feature in this year's game that I had not seen before. 10% gradient, 7.1 kilometers. Max gradient, 13%. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad that I just discovered you. Yay. All right, onto the stage. 20 kilometers left in the stage. The breakaway of five riders has split in the desperation to stay ahead. They are nearly reeled in the first four of those with just one left off the front. They're no threat. The threat is definitely coming from within the group. I do not have the strong climbers, so we are no threat. But can we get anyone to stay alive and stay up the standings a little bit? Well, we'll find out. We'll find out soon. Now just 16 kilometers left. We're coming up first on a sprint point, by the way. And maybe Cantor is going to attack that. Uh, just go for it, because that we just brought him in. And it's 4.9k. So let's, let's go ahead and rejoin the action below. And we're going to do the same thing we did last time. Banachek, who's actually been chilling out today, and Brian. Brian is with Narvaez, so maybe we're going to switch that up, leave Owen by himself, and I'm going to go protect him. There you go, and Brian. Oh, not Brian. Wait, wait, wait. We want Cantor. Okay. Take over for him. There you go. Um, we'll say like 95. You're going to follow Banaszek. Banaszek. Not yet. Not yet. 
not in the best position here in Banajek. So we might go a little earlier than that three kilometers now. Like now. Get through, there you go. Just ride easy, ride easy, ride easy. Okay. Back off a little. Okay. Now start pushing. 1.6. 1.5. Banajek gonna sprint and canter. Did you sprint? Canter? He's set on sprint, but he's not sprinting. <laughs> okay, well, bite me. Uh, canter did not sprint like he should have. And, oh, no, we don't want to do that to everyone, just these guys. Cantor didn't sprint. But Banajek went over first, Cantor went over second. I guess that works. <laughs> Alright, now we can set ourselves up once again. Cantor still has lots of energy as he did not sprint. Banajek uh, will be that odd man out. Owen is the one who needs protection, so we'll go ahead and put Cantor with him. Cantor might have closed up a couple seconds there to be within 12 of the lead, but that means absolutely nothing here, as he will be nowhere near the top of the standings when we get to the top. I'm going to set these guys to an 88 for now. 76 riders to contest this one out. The others are already off the back, even though 23 riders are very close right now. But here we go, 7 kilometers, and it is quite steep. Look how fast Ermino is fading. All right, he is already done. So Banishek, take over with Narvaez, please. So Banishek, you're close here. Come on. Now you're not as close anymore. You're gonna waste all your energy just getting up there. You had the gap. And Narvaez is now alone. All right, so Banajet, we're gonna set you to auto as you are done. Brian is done, and he was protecting McNulty. So McNulty, you're gonna now take Narvaez. Oh, don't do this to me again. Really? You're right on his wheel. There you go. How much wasted energy is that? Too much. Far too much. Owen. I don't like how far back he's dropped. That's our third guy. Alright, we are down to four kilometers. Four kilometers to the top. Narvaez hanging in there pretty well right now. I need to step this up a little bit as he's starting to lose the pace. Three, six riders off the front. Emmanuel Buchmann, Sergio Hanau, Vincenzo Nibali. Ferial, Castro Viejo, Gross Schartner. I should be able to at least stay with this group. So Sepp Van Mark. Okay, Gross Schartner is getting dropped. Here's Slagter. Slagter going for it. 3.4. McNulty, go ahead and use your gel. Owen, how you doing back here? Let's use your gel. You're a little bit further down. You're not going to do quite as well. So you guys hang in there. Narve is white. Are we going backwards? Come on. You're at 91. Five riders off the front, but we're still very much in contention everywhere else. Okay, McNulty just about done. Narvaez. Use your gel, because you're going to be on your own here in a moment. Why are you getting caught behind this guy? Come on. It's a stoner rider slowing you down. McNulty is now done. So Narvaez, time to go. And he's strong in hills. This is his time to shine. Look at him moving up. He's moving up, he's moving up. Alone against all. It required a lot 
Ah, sprint, sprint, sprint. Come on. Nibali takes the win. Hanau takes second. Betiol third. We're going to be in the top ten here. Run fourth. Castro Viejo. Big names there. Looking at eighth position. Van Garderen, Bookman, Narvaez. McNulty for ninth. And Barl, 10th. Here's Owen. Decent Hills guy. This is their time attacking here late on. A little push. Try to move him up the standings. Uh, let's see. Ben King, Jan Izagira, Ulissi all up there. Asgreen. Owen just missing the top 20 and 25th. This is why the time didn't matter on Cantor. He's going to be well down the standings. 72nd. There's Brian. Banaszek and Ermanout coming in. Just outside of the top 100. Gotta say, though, that's a six, uh, success for sure. That's two riders in the top 10. And again, that feels more important than a stage win. But I don't know, maybe because I'm more into the stage racing than sprints, for example. Minute 56 for Narvaez, 210 for McNulty. Very similar time to their overall with Nibali to pick it up on that little bonus. But there you go, 8th and ninth overall, pretty much right where we were before, a couple stages back anyway. Logan Owen in 20th. There's Cantor and his time bonuses, meaning deadly squat. But he's 20 points short of, of Betty Hall. Okay, he picked up some points somewhere, he must have been in the break. Or he was still in contention at the end. Yeah, he was. He's in second overall. No wonder. So, Betty all. Oh, look at that. A 77 overall. Where the heck did he come from? Betty all? A 77? Holy cow. Uh, Betty all's a good good rider. Don't get me wrong. He's a known, known quantity. I'm a little surprised by that rating, though. Little surprised. And he's not even in the same universe as Sagan. And I think Sagan's perfect right there at an 80. So flat and cobble and downhill. I'd even give him a couple notches higher. Downhill especially. I mean, there's not a better bike handler in the world than him ever in the sport. So downhill. Handling that bike on the downhill, handling that bike on the flat. I think even mountains, he should be more like a 68, 70 ish. Because he keeps up when he wants to. It's just, it's not his specialty. He saves his energy for, for elsewhere. He knows his strengths. But when he tries, when he wants to go out, I mean, like, when he won. The tour of California. Three, four years ago. There were fewer climbs to contest. And he was winning every sprint and he was in form. And so he went for it on those climbs. He either minimized his losses or he just stayed at the back of the group. And hung with them on climbs that aren't major mountains. But climbs that were definitely climbs. And he stayed right with the field. That's something you don't see otherwise. Nibali picks up major points, though, at the top. It was actually a higher classification on, than I expected on the on the top there, with 16 points. And now picks up 12. Better y'all. Picks up 10. So there goes that jersey. But the 125s, Narvaez first, McNulty second. Mark Hershey is a minute six behind. He finished with Logan Owen, as did Casper Asgreen, all in that same group. 
and we're fifth in the team's competition. So pretty, pretty good stuff there from the team. Pretty good stuff. But we still don't have a stage win. Two stages left to go. I don't see how we're going to get any better than the top three that we've managed with Betty All and Sagan in the field. But we'll try. A couple of minutes ago, I mentioned that not hitting the objective right comes with the punishment. But if you get double that, you, you get into a zone where the punishment's a lot worse. So, for example, here, Tour of Columbia, objective, top five. We managed a top 10. That's a partial failure. Anything worse than top 10, a top 25 would have been full failure. So you can see that you have the orange star while the red X is just total failure. So that was stage win. We managed a stage top 10, which is three tiers below. Second tier and below that is total failure. Here, we had top 10, we got top 10. So we completed that objective. If we had had top five, then we would have had the bonus beyond completion. And again, that's also why I was mentioning that I'd like to see the stage win be revamped to where it's not just win a stage, but could be get a stage top 10 or stage top five or stage top three to get it, that into the mix. Now, the whole rest of the season, outside of the Colorado Classic, we're now looking at placement. And you can see this one does vary. We have top 10, 5, 5, 3, 5, 5. None of them are for wins. So all of them, if the top three objective, if we were to win that race, then we hit the bonus zone. All of them have that opportunity. The stage wins don't. And it's so frustrating to do so well against World Tour racers get a top three like we've done in this race we've done so well in this race and yet it's going to still go down as a failure but the other thing that i did mention is that there is still something to go for besides just the objective this is what i was talking about the noteworthy results no noteworthy results help boost this evaluation. So it's a way of salvaging this. So I'm not just going for that stage win. I'm still going for the overall. I'm still going for those points with Cantor, just in case. I still went for that climber's jersey, and look what happened. Logan Owen wears the climber's jersey. It's only a single positive. It's not a major mark, but it's still a boost to our results category. Mallorca. That was the other one. The stage win, right? Total fail. We didn't get the stage win. We only got a top 10. Three and a half stars of importance. But we got double pluses there. We got victory of the best climber classification. So we won that jersey. And Coos managed a top 10 overall. So we ended up getting two pluses while we got the negative. The negative hurt more. But the double pluses helped minimize that. So note, noteworthy results are still something pretty important. And that's why we continue to go for something besides just the stage victory. And we can still get more. And these are higher profile races where this kind of stuff comes up. Winning a little continental race doesn't help that very much, sadly. I feel like shit, wins should matter a little bit more. Uh, we're not getting anywhere on the registered riders either because it's a smaller team. We don't have the big names. You can see our most popular rider right now is Sepp Kuss at that little itty bitty evaluation. At least they're happy with the number of riders we have from the U.S. And in the U.S., where it's not as important on the popularity, that same rider, Sepp Kuss, that evaluation plays out a little bit higher. And that helps our squad evaluation and that helps keep this sponsor confidence somewhat high. But the registered riders, nothing. So we need the results to push, to boost us, at least keep us in this happy zone because it does look like we're going to fail this sponsor objective again, and that's going to set us back even further.
But we're looking good in this. We've gotten everybody out and racing so far. And as a team, we're pulling in decent points. I mean, we're fourth in the Continental Rankings. And 23rd overall in the Super Prestige. That is not bad. That is not bad at all. And that is definitely the highest of all the Continental teams. So despite the challenges so far, we are making progress. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. It's just tough. And uh, hey, I like it tough, so it works. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer, and remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe, and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.